Hello, thanks very much for joining me again. Uh, this week's still water part and I'm going to delve into the world of the terrestrial. So what do I mean by terrestrial? Well, it's anything that's blown from the river bank or the, the loch side onto the water that the trout feed on. And uh, the ant is one of the real choice pieces of meat for fish uh, when the season comes. So I'm going to tie a small ant pattern today. What I have in the vise is a Hanak H333 barbless hook at size 12. And this is a fine wire hook, um, which is ideal for this um, dry fly. The thread I'm going to be tying today with is the UTC. It's in black. It's at 70 dinia. And I'm going to get some wax onto my thread before I start. Now, when I put the wax on, what you probably don't see uh, enough of is I rub my fingers through it. And it's just to get off any excess wax. I don't, I don't want a load of wax on this. And I just want to start a millimetre or so in behind the eye. And I'm going to use my rat's tail here just to help guide my thread down. Want nice, Keep it nice and neat on this one. Uh, most of the time I don't bother when I'm putting my, my bed of thread down because it, it's irrelevant. But on this pattern, uh, you need to try and keep it as neat as you can. So I'm going to take it just as the hook's starting to bend away. And then I'm going to remove my waist. Now, at this section here, what I want to do, and you'll have seen from the picture when I started, is to make a rugby ball shape at the back here, the abdomen. So it might take some time, so just bear with me please. That's about the length I want, and now I just need to build up that rugby ball shape. Now the UTC thread's ideal for this. Oh, excuse me. I'm just catching the point of the hook there in my haste. Should maybe just slow down a little bit. Because uh, there's nothing worse when you're doing this than you're working away and you've caught the hook point too many times and the thread just frays away and you've got to start again. So if I just take my time a little bit, you'll notice while I'm tying, I'm not, I've not got a big length of thread out here. I keep it nice and short because what that gives you while you're tying is control. If you keep it short and just allow the right amount of thread out, it just keeps you in control of the whole thing. Just something to bear in mind when you're tying. Okay, I'm fairly happy with that. Just going to come back to where my rugby ball ends. So I'm now here. And what I want to do is put a fairly neat wrap, but I want my thread flattened out. As you can see, the thread has managed to, while I've been making the rugby ball, it's twisted up. So to get rid of them twists, all I'm going to do is spin my thread anti-clockwise. And it flattens it out. Then I can just simply come up. And what I want here is about two eighths of an inch. So I'm going to stop there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is apply some UV resin. I'm going to use the Solaris. Sorry, there's no label. Mine's is a, a bit worse for wear. I've had this some time now. And I'm also going to just uncrank my vise so that I can turn the vise. And what I want to do is cover the little bit I've done there, as well as the rugby ball shape at the back here. Just, if you've got the facility to turn your vise, just makes it a lot easier. So, just do that all the way around. Now, I've got quite a lot of resin on there. So what I need to do is just keep turning my vise to make sure the resin doesn't globulate. Is that even a word? Globulate. Well, you know what I mean. You don't want it dripping all over the place. So I'm just curing that off now.
Now if you were of a mind to, you could give this another coat of resin. Uh, I'm not gonna, because uh, I want the fly to float essentially. But what this will do, this abdomen section, now that it's covered in resin, when it sits in the water, it will sit right in the film for me. Just taking my time, because I want it to dry completely. Because I'm going to put some CDC on next, and I don't want that um, sticking to my resin, obviously. So there we go. That's dried. Perfect. Right. I'm just going to lock my vice down again. And next, I'm going to just move it slightly in the vise. Because all my, all my tying now is going to be done up at this end. So next, I'm going to add a wing. And what I'm using is the Troutline Ultra Select Feather. You can see here, this is the, uh, the tan colour, dark tan. And I've already selected a few feathers out of the packet. Now... What I like about the, the Ultra Select, I've been tying with it for a while now, is I can get two flies out of this if I'm careful. So I'll get a couple of these ants tied with this just, just these three plumes. Now I use three plumes, some people might think that's excessive, but um, I like the fly to stay afloat as long as possible. So I'm going to dress it up to the hook and I want it to come just by the butt of the fly here. So I'm going to grab it with my thumb and forefinger on my left hand and just off to the side here I'm just cutting it and trimming it away. So I've now got that pinched in and what I want to do is capture that in there like so. Perfect. So once you've got it trapped in with a couple of turns, you can come all the way back up. And if you just turn the vise to the side, if, you, if you've got that function, you can see where my little, well, you probably can't see actually. Let's see if I can point out on your side. So where the, the abdomen ends, I've got the, the th very thin body up the side there. And I've captured that in. So before I do anything else, I'm going to add just a little bit more wax to my thread. Not a lot, just up at the top here, because I want to catch in my hackle, which is going to help represent the legs. And what I'm using for a hackle is just this old saddle here. It's uh, sadly seen better days, but I've already selected a feather from it, and it's not much good for anything else other than these sort of jobs or crunchers and the like. But... Uh, it's a lovely colour, this one, and I've already trimmed away uh, the waist here. Now, I should have maybe done this on camera, actually, because what I've done is I've looked at the length of the barb on, on this so that I get the right size. And the feather was originally this length, so I've, I've, I've stripped away quite a bit. Then I'm going to catch that in. Here, and because I put the wax on the thread, that should hold pretty well. I'm going to bring it back up because the hackle's not going to come up the head, it's going to remain at the back there. So I've got my uh, trusty hackle pliers here, and I'm just going to capture the end there. And I only want maybe two turns at maximum. There's one. Oh, come away. If at first you don't succeed and all that. So I'm being very gentle with it. One. And there's number two. I'm going to slick it all back now. It's all gone a bit wrong. Just bear with me. It's just slipped onto the CDC and I don't want that. So I'm just holding it with my fingers just to get a little bit of purchase on it. And once I've got that initial bit trapped in, it becomes a lot easier. So I'm going to pull everything back, make sure nothing, nothing is uh, forward of the hook. So 
sorry, the head, should I say. And once you've got two or three turns in like that, that hack will just pull away for you, no bother at all. So, we've got that in. And if anything, I would say the hackle's maybe, I don't know, millimetres too big for the, the fly, proportions-wise for me. But I'm going to batter on and start to build my head. Now the head is very similar to the abdomen. It takes a bit of uh, building up. But we're looking again for that rugby ball type head. And then once I've got, once I'm happy with it, I've brought my thread to the front of the fly. And if you're clever, you get your whip finish tool out. And if you're a dullard like me, a couple of half hitches. And then I can come in and take away my waist. I must learn to use a whip finish tool. I think uh, it's maybe something every fly tire should learn to do. Now, I have tried on several occasions and failed, but I do feel the need to, um, to learn. So I'm going to just come in with my resin. It's the same again, it's the Solaris bone dry. I need to just release my vise so I can come round the back here And just very carefully cover cover your head. Uh, the sort of thicker the resin, I think the better the better it looks. And I usually do this in a couple of stages. Um, UV resin, I think, works best if you use it in thin coats and then build it up rather than trying to get a lot of resin onto the fly and um, just curing it that way. But if you use thin coats to build it up, it works a lot better. So just bear with me, because I am going to give this another coat. No point in doing half a job, as my granddad used to say. And I think you can see already as I'm applying the second coat of resin, it makes a huge difference. So I've got that in place now. And just bear with me while I cure it. It does take um, about 10 seconds to, to cure the resin on this. But what we'd find, I've tried lots of different resins over the years. And um, they're all pretty good nowadays, actually. When they first came out, it was a bit hit and miss, but most of the resins now are pretty good. The only reason I like the Solaris is um, is the brush tool, really. It's just fit for purpose. Where a lot of the other clear resins, um, the nozzles are too big, they don't come with a brush, or, you know, there are various other factors that, that um, make them not the best of choices. So, there we go, that's cured, and as you can see, you've got a very realistic looking ant pattern. I hope that was of some use to you, thanks very much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. to make them up, that's how to do it.